Welcome back. I'm assuming this is going to be the final part of Opportunity Makes the Thief as we go over here and speak to Pella. Ah, nice to see you. You're looking in good spirits. I, I feel like I'm in good spirits. The museum is packed these days. I've never seen it so full of visitors. You run a tight ship here. Everything has its place and its purpose. If it does not, it does not belong. Still, it'd be nice if those kids would stop littering. It's barely lunchtime and I've already picked up three half-eaten packs of Snow White popping candy. Is there something you wanted to talk about, Pella? Ah, don't worry. Nothing was stolen this time. This time? You remember that Norbert guy we captured? The Silvermane guards have acquired new intel from him. I thought you might find it interesting. I always wondered, how did he, a rich kid with virtually no real-life experience, suddenly think of becoming a smuggler? There's no way someone like him could have come up with the idea of disassembling a sculpture and hiding the pieces inside robots. The result is just as I expected. After less than half a day of interrogation, he confessed everything. Do tell? He admitted that a mysterious figure named Mr. Coldfeet persuaded him to target the museum exhibits. Mr. Coldfeet fooled Norbert into believing that many of the museum's artifacts were forcibly seized from private collectors by the Silvermane guards. He told him that true justice would be returning the artifacts to the people. Norbert probably didn't believe any of that nonsense. I think he just wanted to prove himself and add more to his fortune. Mr. Coldfeet not only introduced him to buyers, but also gave him advice, and only charged him a 30% consultant's fee. In the opinion of our young Mr. Norbert, the deal was too good to refuse. But have you found where this Mr. Coldfeet could be? Uh, <clears throat> that's what I wanted to discuss with you. Norbert said Mr. Coldfeet operates with extreme discretion, and knows the Silverman guards his every move like the back of his hand. If he catches wind about the slightest rumor in the city, he'll disappear without a trace. If what Mr. Norbert said is true, then our safest option is to send a civilian to try to reach out to Mr. Coldfeet and lure him out of his lair. You want me to go and meet him? You guessed it. Everyone agrees that there is no better candidate than you. Everyone. Everyone agrees. Okay. Norbert says he usually communicates with Mr. Coldfeet through the door of a room in the Goethe Hotel. The usual agreed meeting time is... right now. Take this as a final request from the Silvermane Guards. Can you go to the Goethe Hotel to meet with this Mr. Coldfeet? Well, I don't have a choice, do I? I suppose I will. Let's see here, because there it is, a eh? Little anchor down here. Maybe we could get a lovely cup of tea while we're here. So who are we thinking this is, anyway? My money's on a certain blue-haired individual. Hello, mate. Normally not people there, is there? Or have I just forgotten that? Could have done. Hello, hello. How is it, Twitika? Are you at the Gota Hotel? I'm a bit scared. Don't be scared. You can do this. Norbert said the secret signal he set with Mr. Coldfeet was three little knocks. Light knocks. Then two heavy knocks. Now it's all up to your silver tongue, Twitika. You can do it. I believe in you. The door is shut tightly. Behind the sturdy wood, you can vaguely hear a rustling sound. This room must belong to a resident of Bellabog. Curiosity gets the better of you. You press your ear to the door and try to figure out what the sound is. I took a look there. The man says of a slightly hoarse voice, There's nothing in room 237. The boy must just be bored. Oh no, I was right in that. There seems to be another woman in the room. She sighs sullenly. Her voice is trembling. No, dear. 
Le let's leave. There's something in this hotel. After that, an unsettling silence falls on the room. The man flies into a rage as he shatters the deathly silence. I am absolutely not leaving here. No one can make me leave. Oh, nope. fine. People told me to check these doors. I thought I'd, I'd wait until it came up at some point. This is now. The door is shut tightly. Behind the sturdy wood, you can vaguely hear a rustling sound. This room must belong to a resident of Bellabog. Curiosity gets the better of you. Let's see what the sound is. The crisp sound of hammers striking against the roller of a typewriter fills the room. The sound is pleasant at first, plucking away irregularly. Then after a while, the sound becomes increasingly noisy and chaotic. The person in front of the typewriter clearly is experiencing some writer's block. Then the unsettling coughing stops all of a sudden. The room fills with a low, incessant muttering. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Oh, stay away from that room. The door is shut tightly, we know this bit. The room is full of a woman's sobs. She seems to be pleading with someone else in the room. Her voice is far too strained, making it impossible to figure out what she is saying. But you can feel her unease and terror. Then a rough, unpleasant voice says haughtingly, Danny isn't here, Mrs. Torrance. The woman seems in shock. Her incessant cries abruptly stop. Okay. The door is shut tightly. Curiosity. You occasionally hear a muffled sound. It sounds like something hard and made of rubber. Most likely some kind of ball. You hear a thunk that a ball will make hitting a hollow brick wall. Then there's a thud as it falls to the wooden floor. The ball rolls quickly into the recesses of the room. It seems like someone has picked up the ball. And they throw it again. And there's that same thunk, thud and roll. The person picks it up and throws it again. Thunk, thud, roll. And so it continues without any signs of stopping. Okay, fair enough. Door shut tightly. Curiosity. There seems to be a man and a woman arguing loudly about something. You concentrate as hard as you can to pick up the fragments of sentences coming from the room. My dear, it was just a nightmare, the woman says somewhat gently. The man is hysterical. You could have no clue how terrifying my dream was. I was holding an axe, and then... Wake up. It's just a dream. The woman seems like she's sobbing. Look, how you scared our child. The child's piercing cries drown out the arguing. You can feel a frightening chill run down the back of your neck. Okay. Uh, as if someone pulls a sharp point of a knife against your skin. Yes, you are certain you sense something at the end of this hallway. Uh, what? Oh, hello! Two utterly identical twins stare at you. Come play with us. Forever. 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 What happened? Oh god, was that just a dream? What happened there? What was that? What? Okay. That was all lovely and normal. That was fine. Um, what about this door? Uh, we can't check that one. Okay. The door remains unperturbed, and you feel a chill breeze brush past your knees. If you stayed any longer in this freezing hallway, you would soon turn into a Miss Cold Feet yourself. Tap three times and knock twice. <sighs> There's no response. Did I remember the wrong password? Kick the door in. Uh, Norbert, is that you? Oh, wait, hold on. In a low voice. Uh, yes, it's me. Huh? Oh, what took you so long? Oh, I was worried the Silvermane guards might have got to you. 
But you're not the type to turn someone in at first capture, right? Well, it's time for me to get on out of here. After all, we already made a nice little fortune on this trip, huh? How could I ever betray such a... Oops, sorry. How could I betray such a dear friend? Uh-oh, someone's getting a little emotionally over-invested? <laughs> you know what we are? Accomplices. You know what that means? Partners in crime. You know what else that means? We are not friends. There's something about his voice that feels familiar, though. All right, enough chinwagging. So how much did the microfilm sell for? Uh-oh. I'm just gonna have to make up an amount. Hope it's believable. Five hundred thousand credits. What? Five hundred thousand? No offense, kid, but I can't see you haggling that kind of number. Or maybe you... What? What? What kind of hotel is this anyway? No peepholes on the doors! He's starting to suspect me. That's not good. I better think through the next question carefully before answering. You know, I just realized there's something I forgot. Uh, maybe you could help me remember. That gears and wisdom sculpture I told you to take apart and hide away... Uh, can you remind me how many pieces it had? About, it's about 40, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you obviously answered wrong. Not a peep can be heard from Mr. Coldfeet. Uh-oh. It'd be a shame if you, the hero of the Stellaron Crisis, the Supreme Guardian's respected commander-in-arms, let the prisoner slip away just because of a hotel door. There is only one choice left in front of you. Kick in the door. Uh, uh. Saw this coming a mile away. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, oh, if it isn't my valued client. <laughs> what a pleasant surprise to see you again. Isn't it amazing how fate brings people together, huh? Huh? Our bridge of friendship could extend all the way to Everwinter Hill. <laughs> Uh-huh. I guessed it was you from the beginning. I, I wouldn't say the beginning. It just, towards the end, it was like, who could it be? Guests? So, you don't have any evidence. <laughs> well, I'm, I mean, how could you? Your old buddy Sampo is a model citizen these days. You know the guards on sentry duty in the restricted zone? I deliver their breakfast every day. <laughs> Buddy? That implies we're friends. No, I, I think the best you could say that we are is... complices, not friends. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> So, kind of cold out, huh? <laughs> Man, this is getting uncomfortable. Uh, okay, okay, I have a proposal. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're going to find this very reasonable. Yeah, I made a few small fortunes in the artifact business lately, and I can give you a third of my earnings. How about that, huh? In exchange, I only ask that you please... Don't tell the Silvermane guards about me. Uh, just tell them you missed the culprit. You're a big hero. They won't give you a hard time about it, right? How's that sound, huh? One third is a lot of money. Think about it. I would never dare to rip off a valued client such as yourself. You think I can be bought? I mean, how, how can you be so unaccommodating? I mean, that is not like you, sister. You know nothing of me, Sampo. Oh, 
I knew the good times couldn't last, but I didn't think a valued client would bring them to a close. Oh, go ahead. Notify the authorities. I'd rather burn out than fade away. Burn out you will, apparently. I caught Mr. Cold Feet. He's Sampo. What? Sampo? I thought he's turned over a new leaf, but... I'm coming over right now, Twitka. Wait for me where you are. Don't let him get away. <laughs> Sampo has vanished. No sound of hurried footsteps. No sound of a window or door opening. Interesting. <sighs> I let him get away. <sighs> Too late now. I'll have to wait for Pela to get here. He could still be in the room. He could be in that trunk over there. Wait in an empty room for a while. I'm here. Where's the suspect? He vanished into thin air. I see. So he's just as cunning and crafty as ever. He fooled the Silvermane guards into thinking he'd changed. But we won't be falling for that act again anytime soon. And this operation ends here. You've helped us enough already. Leave the rest to the Silvermane guards. Here. These rewards are for you. I hope they come in handy in the journey ahead. Oh, by the way, if you still want to help run the History and Culture Museum, Miss Saris and I are always happy to work with you. Ah, uh, speaking of which, Miss Eris was just looking for you. Why don't you go to the museum and talk to her? We have a new volunteer, don't we? And it's going to be Sampo. It's going to be Sampo. Oh, we should just use the map. Hold on. I love that. Oh, and I've got to wait. Because it doesn't let me go to the map until that's gone away. So, let's go. Oh, it is. We're back. Oh, hello. Thank you for all your help. Business at the museum is booming again. I haven't seen this many people here since I was a little girl. Oh, right! There's something I wanted to tell you. A man with blue hair came along and left a message. He asked me to pass it on to the manager of the museum. Uh, here. I haven't read the content. Do you want to take a look? Read the message. To my dearest and most valued client, Congratulations! Remember this day as the day you almost caught the great Mr. Coldfeet. <laughs> so, how's museum manager life treating you? Just a little reminder <laughs> when it comes to working in museums. I'm quite the damn hand. <laughs> What I mean to say is, if you're ever in need of a passionate and professional individual, one with an inside knowledge of museum security blind spots, I'm only a call away. Don't worry, my exhibit smuggling days are behind me. <laughs> Some good voice work here with Sampo. There we go. That's it going to be done. There isn't going to be a part five. And we got Mr. Coldfeet helping us out now. Thanks for your hard work, Twitka. The museum has been restored to its former glory. Oh, isn't that lovely? So we've essentially got that done. So what we will do then, welcome to Bellborg, yes, yes, yes. We'll end this part here. And in the next part, we'll finish everything else off. Because there's still sealer to get. And there's still some exhibitions to get. Other than that, I don't think there's anything else. So, we shall see you in the next part when we get those things done. Ta-da. Oh, Sampo. For now.